Hi, so this session is on a few decimal skills, um, and the decimal skills we'll be covering are listed here. So we'll be turning a decimal into a fraction, or turning a finite. Now, finite means ending, so a decimal that doesn't go on forever. We can actually turn into a fraction quite easily. Um, next one, next skill we'll be learning is turning a fraction into a decimal, and we're doing this mentally. We know how to do it the long way using the bridge. Um, but we're just going to revise on how to do it mentally. Third one is turning a decimal into, into a percentage, and then the opposite, turning a percentage into a decimal. And the last two are actually the easiest skills um, in this session. Now let's just quickly recap on our table of values. Now we know that we've got ones, tens, and hundreds, and it goes all, all the way up this way. Um, after our decimal point, so we've got our decimal point here, we end up with our tens, hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands, and it never ends. Now, another way of showing tens is to multiply by 1 over 10, because tens is, is saying out of 10, it's a fraction. Hundreds is saying out of 100. Thousands is saying out of 1,000. And you notice that with each, after the, the decimal point, with each column, we simply add on a zero. So add a zero here, there's two zeros here, three, four, and there's a pattern happening. Um, and the other way to see this pattern is if we go across our table of values this way, so see these arrows? What we're, What's actually happening is we're dividing by 10. Each column is being divided by 10. So 10 divided by 10 gives us our 1. 1 divided by 10, okay? So if we have 1 divided by 10, it's the same as saying... 1 over 10. We can write 1 divided by 10, 1 divided by 10 in fraction form. That's how we get our 1 divided by 10. If we divide 1 divided by 10, or 1 over 10, divided by 10 again, we end up with 1 over 100. Because we know that this will flip. So this will turn to times, the 10 over 1 will flip, and we end up with 1 over 10 times 1 over 10, which gives us a 1 over 100. And that's what happens. And of course, if we head the other way, we then times by 10 and do the opposite. And it's important to understand this pattern um, and to know that with each column, we are simply adding on a zero. So for example, if I put a value in here, um, like 0 0.5, just say, we know 0 0.5 is a half. But to write this as a fraction straight away, we all we have to do is have a look and see five is in which column five is in the tenths column so it's like saying five tenths or we have five out of ten okay and there's our fraction just by doing it mentally we should be able to see since five is in the tenths column I need one zero on the bottom so five out of ten and this gives us a half if we simplify this divide them both by five we get our half so let's try a few more examples um, where we have decimals and where we are able to mentally turn these into a fraction. So let's try some of these. So let's try some of these questions. Now, I'll show you a quick way on how to mentally turn these into fractions. Of course, when we do this, you should really simplify your fractions as well. Um, but at this stage, we're just turning them into fractions. So we've got 0 0.02. Always check if you see if you have a whole number. For these ones, they're all zero, so we don't, we're not going to have a mixed fraction. And now we've got 0 0.02. Zero is in our tenths column, so that's one zero. Two is in our hundreds column, so we end up with a hundred zeros. So all you're going to do is count how many decimal places you have, and decimal places, that keyword means how many numbers after the decimal point. We've got one and two. Or we can say how many places after the decimal point. All right, since we've got two numbers after the decimal point, our denominator will be, we'll have two zeros. And of course, we put a one in front, so 100. And we can see two is in the hundreds column. So now, on top, we simply put the numbers we see. Now, if you put zero, two, that's technically correct. But the zero, does this zero have to be there? No, it doesn't. So our final answer will be two out of 100. And that's it. We're done. And of course, you can simplify this. If we divide them by a factor of 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, we end up with 1 over 
50. And that would be our final answer. Okay, but at this stage, we won't be focusing on simplifying. We'll just be practicing on how to turn these into, whoops, sorry, fractions. So this one, number two, once again, the zero for a whole, there's no whole number, but zero. So we have how many decimal places do you see? One, two, three. That means our denominator will have three zeros. So one and three zeros, a thousand. Three is in the thousands column. And we can put zero, zero, three. But we know the two zeros don't have to be there. We just put three out of a thousand. And of course, if you put this in your calculator, three divided by a thousand, it will give you this. Number three, how many decimal places do you see? One, two. So it will be out of a hundred. A hundred has two zeros. And two, twenty-seven. Oh, sorry, two and seven we put on top to give us twenty-seven. Okay. Um, number four. Count how many decimal places do we have? One, two, three, four. So that is one and one, two, three, four zeros. And 28 just goes on top. Remember, you can put zero, zero, twenty and two, eight, but we end up with 28 on top. Okay? And of course, this can be simplified, so I want you to go ahead and simplify it as well. Um, and that's all you have to do. Count how many decimal places you see, and that makes up the amount of zeros on the bottom. And then the numbers that go on top are the numbers that you have. And if you have a zero in front, like here, we had two zeros in front of the two and eight, that's fine. When you write your fraction, you just don't write them because we don't have to have zero, zero, two, and eight. Okay, the zero, zero in front are now invisible because we have 28 on top. Now for, now for our next example, so we are still turning decimals into fractions and using that mental method. Um, if we have a look at 2.5, if I asked you to turn 2.5 into a fraction, I'm pretty sure you would say, oh, that's just 2 and a half. We can see 2.5 and 2.5 and are the exact same thing, except one is in decimal form, one is in fraction form. And you can see how this 2 in the 1's column ends up being the big whole number in the mixed fraction. Okay, so the trick is whenever you have a whole number, okay, in this case it was 2, even if we had 22 or 200, you put the whole number um, as the big number in the mixed fraction, and that means the fraction part, in this case a half, is the decimal part. Because we know a half on its own, a half on its own is what? 0 0.5. If you put that in your calculator, it will show you 0 0.5. But because we have 2.5 or 2.5, instead of a 0, we have to have a 2 there and then 0.5. Okay? So keep in mind, whenever you have a whole number, that becomes a large number of your mixed fraction. And the fraction part of a mixed fraction is actually the decimal part. So let's try these three questions. We've got 2.1. So we can see we don't have a 0 here. So we will have a mixed fraction. That 2 becomes our big 2 in our mixed fraction. And now the point 1, this is our got this is going to be our fraction part. Okay? So we can write our fraction part. Now, point 1, how many decimal places after the decimal? There is one. So it's simply going to have one zero on the bottom. So it's 10. And the 1 goes on top. And that's it. And if on your calculator, if you push 1 divided by 10, it will give you 0 0.1. That's how we get our point 0.1. But of course, we have to go plus 2 because we've got two holes. This one down here, once again, we've got a 3 in our 1's column. So it's a whole number 3. Now, point zero 0.07 is our decimal part. How many decimal places do you see? We've got 1 and 2. So we put in two zeros. And we put our 7 on top. Remember, you can put 0, 7, but the 0 now doesn't have to be there. We just write 7. And can this be simplified? No, it can't. So that's our final answer. And the last one down here, we have 52. 5, five is in our tens column, 2 is in our ones. That's fine. It's still a whole number. It's going to be the big part of our mixed fraction. And this part here is going to be our fraction, 0 0.018. So... How many decimal places do you see? We have one, two, three decimal places, so three zeros. And now the number that goes on top is just going to be 18. The zero can go can disappear. Now, can we simplify 18 and 1,000? Yes, we can. 
They're both even, so you can divide them both by two and keep simplifying until you can't simplify anymore. But I'll leave you guys to do that yourself and check with your calculator. Let's learn our next skill, and that is turning a fraction into a decimal. So we are now doing the opposite of what we did before. So let's just start off with a problem like we had before. Um, and that was if we had just say 0 0.2 and we had to turn that into a fraction, just to recap on what we did before. Well, we know that we've got one decimal place, no whole number here. So we end up with 2 over 1 and 1 0, so 10. So 0 0.2 as a fraction would be 2 over 10. If we simplify this, divide by 2, divide by 2, we finally end up with 1 over 5. And that will be our final answer. So now what we have to do is to turn this fraction into a decimal. We're doing the opposite. So imagine that we started with 2 over 10. Okay, so imagine the question was, question 1, turn this fraction into a decimal but do it mentally. Because I know that you know how to use the bridge and 2 would fall down and go under the bridge. You can do it that way, but it's an important skill to do this mentally. And to do this mentally, you've got to think about how do, we, how do we go about doing the opposite of what we just did. 0 0.2 was 2 over 10 because we counted what? How many decimal places? In this case, there was one decimal place, one number after the decimal which gave us our one zero. So now using that knowledge, let's do the opposite. Um, to turn this fraction now into a decimal. We know the decimal should be 0 0.2, but imagine that we didn't. To do this, you do the same thing. Count how many zeros you see. We've got a one, and how many zeros do we have? We have one. Is there a big number? Is this a mixed fraction? No, it's not. There's no big number out here, no whole number. So we are going to have zero point, that's your first step, if your first step is to identify whether it will be 0 point something or if you have a big whole number, whether it will be 4 point something or 5 point something. But this one, 0. And now, how many decimal places do we need? We have one zero, so we need one decimal place. And if it helps, draw a little space saying that's one spot for one number. And what will go there? What's on top? We have 1, 2. And that's it. That's how we get our 0 0.2. So let's try a few more. And I just before we do that, I just want to recap on what if you forgot how to do it mentally? If you did forget, that's fine. Um, you just have to use your bridge. Now, if we had 2 over 10, yes, we can simplify this to get 1 over 5, which makes it easier. But just in case you forgot how to simplify also, oh, I'll just get rub this out. We can still use our bridge. No problem. So get our bridge ready. Let's just see if we get 0 0.2 as well by doing it this way. 2 will fall down and go under the bridge. And we've got 10 on the outside. Now make our decimal visible. Add some zeros. And off we go. And let's see if we get 0 0.2. 10 into 2, can it go? No, it can't. So put a 0. Carry the 2 over because we haven't used it yet. 10 into 20, can it go? Well, 10, 20, that's 2 times. Any remainders? No. And there's our 0 0.2. And of course, if you use 1 over 5, because we know these two fractions are equivalent, this has just been simplified, you will also get 0 0.2. So if you're not sure about that, divide 1 divided by 5 using the bridge and see if you also get 0 0.2, which you should. So now let's turn So now let's turn these fractions into decimal using that mental method. So no bridges. So your first step is our because our denominator is 100 or 1,000, or as long as you've got 1 and zeros, you can do this mentally. So how many zeros do we have? We've got two zeros. We have no whole number over here. It's not, it's not a mixed fraction. So that tells us we'll have, we will have 0 point something. Okay? Next. Oh, and also, the other way to remember is if you have a proper fraction like this and, and no mixed number, um, it'll always be 0 point something when your number on top is smaller. Now, because we have two zeros, we've got one, two decimal places, and that means two numbers have to go here. But the problem with this is I've only got a seven up here. Now, if you did this and put your seven in this spot, you actually made a mistake because now there's nothing in this spot. And the answer isn't actually 0 0.7. It's close. If you haven't got enough numbers, first put a zero, then the seven goes there. So seven divided by 100 or seven hundredths is actually 0 0.07. And you can check using your calculator. 
So try these two before I do them. Um, so now with question three, your first step is count. How many zeros do you see? One, two, and three. So we're going to, and is there a, sorry, sorry, your first step should have been, is it a mixed fraction? Is there a whole number out here? No. So it's zero point something. And 21 is the small number on top. Now your second step is to count. How many zeros do you see? One, two, three. That means there will be one, two, three spaces that have to be filled. Now on top, what, what number do we have? We've got 21. Is that enough numbers to fill up all three spaces? No, which means we must first put a zero and then 21. So the answer is 0 0.021 and that's it. And for number four, number four now you can see it's a mixed fraction. We have a whole number two over here, which means that instead of zero point something, we must have two point something. Okay, that's our first step. And now for our fraction, our fraction part we know gives us our decimal. So now you can forget about the two taken care of. Let's figure out our decimal part. How many zeros do we see? One and two. That means we will have two de places, decimal places. How many numbers on top? There's just one. So to fill in these spaces, we put a zero and then our one. So two and one hundred as a fraction is 2.01 as a decimal. So now we're up to our last two points, turning a decimal into a percentage and then turning a percentage into a decimal. So the first two points we worked with decimals and fractions. Now we're working with decimals and percentages. Now I know there's a lot of um, skills involved in this topic with fractions, decimals and percentages because we can go back and forth with each one. That's why it's important to keep practicing and eventually when you look at a problem, you won't, have, you won't get stuck. It'll make sense on, which, what, on what we're actually doing. So now we, that we are turning a decimal into a percentage, remember, whenever you turn something into a percentage, your answer will have to have the percentage symbol on it. Don't ever forget that. So whenever you see turning something into a percentage, make sure you put this somewhere to remind yourself, my answer must have this at the end. Now, to turn anything into a percentage, we times by 100. That is the only thing you have to remember. And now all you have to do is when we multiply a decimal by a hundred or a thousand, you just count how many zeros you see and move the decimal to the right, which is that way. Because we're multiplying by a number, our number is getting larger. So we move to the right. So now, because we're turning all of these into a percentage, we're simply moving the decimal two places to the right because we've got two zeros. So let's do that. So 2.01, let's times it by a hundred. And of course, we've got to add our percentage at the end. So this will equal, move it one and two places. So the decimal has moved from here to the end. So we have 201% done. Number two, we're times it by 100 and turning it into a percentage. So move it, how many zeros? Two, so one and two. The decimal is now at the end for this one. And we end up with 82%. Number three, once again, move it two places to the right, one and two. Decimal has moved from here to there. So we have three, four, zero, one, three, four, zero, one, okay, which is really 3,401. It's now a percentage. The decimal is, can be invisible now because it's at the end. Let's just do one more. So with this decimal, all we have to do is, once again, we're turning it into a percentage, so show working out, times in multiplying by 100, and don't forget to add the percentage symbol. And now this simply moves one and two places, okay? So it's going to end up in between the eight and the three. So if it helps, cross it off so you can see where it is now. Does this zero have to be there now? No, it doesn't. So we end up with two, eight, or 28.31. And don't forget to add the percentage. We have changed this decimal into a percentage. And that's it. So 28.31%. So now for our final skill for this session, we are turning a percentage into a decimal. So to, obviously, if we're turning a percentage into a decimal, we have to start off with a percentage. Um, and now, this is actually extremely easy. All we have to do, just like we were, if we were turning a percentage into a fraction, is to write 20% as a fraction. 
20% as a fraction is, we know, 20 over 100. Okay, and if we were turning this into a fraction, we would simplify our fraction, and that's it. But we're not doing that, we're turning this into a decimal. So when turning a percentage into a decimal, don't worry about simplifying. All you have to worry about is using your division skills because this is, yes, it's a fraction, but this is also saying 20, the vincular means divide by 100. Okay, and we know whenever we divide by 100 or 1,000, 1 and zeros, all we have to do is move the decimal to the left, the opposite of what we did before. So if the decimal is invisible, I'll make it visible. And if I divide by 100, that's two zeros. So it moves one and two places, this time to the left. It's gone from there. We end up with 0 0.20. Or if you wanted to say, write 0 0.2 in the front. So our final answer could be 0 0.2. You can leave the zero there if you wanted to. But we end up with 0 0.2. And it's not a percentage. We turn this percentage into a decimal. And look, if we wanted to go back to make sure we did the right thing, to turn this back into a percentage, we know we've got to times it by 100. Do the opposite. If we times it by 100, we go 1 and 2 back this way, add a 0 in the space, and we end up with 20%. So you can see how we're just going back and forth. So let's turn these so let's turn these decimals oh sorry let's turn these percentages into decimals so now we know we are simply dividing by 100 this symbol means this number out of 100 or divided by 100 so I'm not going to write that now because you know that step I showed you before because I haven't got enough space so now dividing by 100 just move it back one two places move this back one two places now if you notice you won't have enough numbers what I do is I add a zero first, okay, just to fill in my space. You don't have to do that, but sometimes students forget to fill in the space. So move it back one, two places. I'll add a zero here, move it back one, two places. And that will be our new pos position of our decimal. So let's write our answers. So we'll end up with, it's gone from here, we've got 0 0.256. Or we can write 0 0.256, done. There's our decimal. Here, it's gone from there. So we have 0 0.007, 0 0.007 or 0 0.007. And last one, it's gone from here. So make sure you write your decimal and write all the numbers you see after it, including the zeros that are in front. So we've got zero, we got one, zero, and two. And if you want to put a zero at the front, you can. And so we end up with 0 0.0102. That's our decimal. And remember, if you want to double check, if you times all of these by 100, you simply go back two places to the right and you end up with what you started off with. And just, and just quickly, um, something that you, when, when you practice this, there's something that you should notice, and that is if we start off with um, 0 0.1, if we, if we times this decimal by 100 to turn it into a percentage, it'll give us 10% because 1 and 2. If we have 0 0.2, this is 20%. So 0 0.3 will be 30%. Okay, so there's a pattern that you can sort of remember, and that is if you have 0 0.1, 10%, 0 0.2, 20%. So all the way to 0 0.9, that will be 90%. And of course, if we have a whole number one, and to turn this whole number one into a percentage, we times it by 100, we end up with 100%. So one is actually, as a percentage, 100%. And I'm sure everyone likes to get um, scores like this with 100%. So just keep in mind, whenever you have decimals, like 0 0.3, 0 0.2, just remember that it's actually, as a percentage, mentally, 30% or 90%. Um, so that's it. Thank you.